I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 7 in my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. In this video, we'll address the plug in the middle of this picture. That's a Super Strike Daughter. Now, daughters need a little bit of water pressure against the lip in order to swim properly. If you take a daughter and drag it through calm water, uh, you'll probably put the plug right back in your bag or, or get rid of it because it won't look very good. Uh, but in the case here where we've got some heavy current and I've uh, dug that plug in a little bit, you can see how it zigzags back and forth. And that's exactly what this plug is supposed to do. In fact, um, this plug is called a Super Strike Zigzag, but the class of plug is a darter. So when this plug hits the water, I'm going to take a couple of very fast cranks to dig that plug in. There we go, fast cranks. And then I'm backing off on the speed. And, and then I'm just going to uh, use a, a pretty steady retrieve. We're going to get to look at that a lot in this video. And uh, the retrieve coupled with the current, there we go, will put just about the right amount of pressure on that plug to get it zigzagging and to catch fish on it. So you're going to get to see something here that has really nothing to do with daughter fishing, but uh, just fishing in general. Uh, when you're getting a fish close, never pull it directly at you. Um, always keep your rod off to the side a little bit. Watch how I'm going to shift the rod over to my left right there. I'm shifting it, and there's wise because, uh, you know, if the hook pulls, you don't want to be pulling that lure right at you because you can get it in the face, and I certainly wouldn't want to get that daughter plug in the face. Again, a rapid retrieve to dig that plug in and then back down on the speed. So a daughter is a very important tool in a night surf caster's arsenal for striped bass fishing. But it's a plug that really does not work very well in the day. Um, and you're not going to see any big fish in this video, just schoolies and occasional keeper in there, maybe to 30 inches or so. Uh, but I'm just happy to get some fish actually hitting a daughter during the day. I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll hit it, and you, you're getting to see that. But in general, uh, if I can catch fish on a daughter during the day, there's probably something else in the bag that will catch uh, even more fish. Uh, so what you see in there, I've, I've got the, the barbs crushed down on these hooks, so it makes it uh, a lot easier to release them. Um, but again, um, really, it's a night plug. It's not something uh, that I'll use too much in the daytime, but this was a nice opportunity here. I had a good bite going in this current, and uh, I think it's a, even though the fish are on the small side, it's good enough to get the point across on how to work these things. So again, the important thing is to keep water pressure on the lip of the plug to get it to zigzag. And in this case, obviously, we're using current because there's a lot of current here. If you were out on the open beach, and this is a very popular plug out on the open beach when you've got some wave movement, when you've got some sweep or current, uh, certainly through the white water. Um, and again, you know, you, you just got to make contact with that plug, couple fast cranks, dig it in, maintain pressure. The plug will do what it needs to do, and it's deadly. And uh, when I use daughters, a very high percentage of the time, I'll be using this Super Strike daughter, and uh, they just make the one size. All right, the rod that I'm using in this video is one that I use in many of my bass videos. It's a nine-foot medium action graphite. It is made, uh, it's a custom rod, made from a Lamaglass GSB-121L blank. That's a 10-foot blank. Cut one foot from the butt, and uh, it just makes an excellent rod. The reel in this case is a Penn 6500 SSV Bayless. I'm really getting to like this reel. I started using it in the beginning of the season. This is this video shot near the end of the season. Um, and I started using the reel in the beginning of the season. I just never took it off. And I've got a couple of much more expensive reels collecting dust while I just keep using this one. And so far, no problems. It's uh, seen quite a bit of salt water splashing over it and uh, hanging in there great. So I, I keep using it. And the line is 30 pound test spider wire stealth braid at the end of the braid. I have about a three foot liter of 50 pound test fluorocarbon. Uh, there's a Tsunami Centro uh, swivel on one end where the, the braid and the leader are connected. And at the end, I have a tactical angler's clip.
So this piece of water is like a bay channel. At the end of the cast is maybe 10 to 12 feet of water. Um, that's a really nice depth for working daughters because uh, as I think you can see, uh, they don't dive very deep, uh, just a couple of feet mostly. So this is a, a good situation and uh, clearly there's a lot of current here so it's kind of perfect for working this plug. So unlike some lures, uh, the darter really doesn't give you much feedback on the end of the rod to let you know that you're doing it right. Uh, you know, if you think about something like a bottle plug or even some swimmers, you'll get a little bit of a pulsation on the tip of the rod. Obviously with surface lures you can watch those and you know that they're working properly. Uh, a darter, um, it, it's really something I think of as darter faith. You know, I know that if I take this plug and apply pressure to the lip either with current or with wave sweep or some kind of water movement I know that the plug will swim properly and it will catch fish and uh, really the reinforcement is when you start using one of these plugs and you you know get those first couple of fish then you'll kind of get dialed in on um, you know how much pressure to put on it and at that point it becomes a, a very productive lure All right, so this is just the same lure uh, in white instead of yellow, and I was just wondering if it showed up maybe a little bit better on the video. But uh, uh, color-wise, white, yellow, these, these are great colors, and I'm just going to uh, stick with this plug for now and use the white one. So I didn't get hit in the usual strike zone on this cast. Uh, but as it's going down current, I'm definitely going to back down on the retrieve speed because the further it swings down current, uh, the more of an effect the current is going to have on the plug. So to compensate for that, I'm slowing the retrieve speed down. All right, so I'm pretty much done narrating this video. Uh, there's plenty of action left. If you hang in there until uh, about 12.25 on this video, you'll see something rather strange, something I've not seen before. So uh, you might want to check that out. Otherwise, I hope you have found this useful. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.
So I've crushed the barbs on the hooks on this plug, so it makes it a little bit easier to uh, get the hooks undone. And uh, there's still a little bit of a barb left, and you can see that there. It doesn't just slide out completely easily, but it comes out a lot easier than if uh, you didn't crush them down at all. So I find that to be a little bit helpful, especially when you're standing in water and you have to handle a lot of fish. All right, now watch for a white object coming in from the left side. What you're seeing there is a striped bass that has choked to death while eating another striped bass. And I've never seen that before. I know uh, the resolution on the camera is probably not good enough for you to tell what those fish uh, are, but you know I got to see very clearly. My first reaction was it was probably a bass that had choked on a big bunker or had choked on a shad, but no, not at all. Clearly, I could see that both of those were stripers, and uh, I've never really known stripers to eat other stripers, but you know there it was, and uh, yeah, that was pretty bizarre. So, all right, I hope you've enjoyed this video.